Hey, Bobby here from Wedding Film School, a channel dedicated to inspiring and educating wedding filmmakers. And in this video, I'm gonna show you eight things that pros are doing for their wedding films that help set them and their work apart. Real quick, if at the end of this video you found it helpful, I'd love to have you like and subscribe to follow along for more wedding filmmaking tutorials in the future. Let's jump in. The first thing that pros are doing is bringing lights. And if you spend any time around Facebook groups and other places, you'll always see posts about how such and such camera doesn't need any lights because it's such clean high ISO. But I'd encourage you not to listen to those people. Are they technically correct? Yes, but that's not how people use lights and bringing some decent lights to a wedding that you are filming will instantly improve your work. You paint with light, using it to highlight and separate your subject, and when used correctly, it will have a huge impact on your finished product. I've been a big fan of the Godox lights lately, but there are plenty of awesome options available. Number two is having the right equipment for the job, and this can mean a lot of things. You need to know what you're going to be up against for that specific shoot, and if you can't accomplish something because of a gear limitation, then that's a mistake, and it's one I see made pretty often by those newer to the industry. Now this could mean not bringing lights for a dark reception, not having long enough lenses for a large Catholic ceremony with strict rules, um, not being able to deliver things in full because of uh, recording limitations, not being able to take an audio source based on the cables you have or don't have, or the very worst in my opinion, which is not having backup gear in the event that a camera or piece of audio gear goes down. Showing up to a wedding with the right set of gear that is capable of handling all situations takes time to build out, but you'll see any seasoned veteran doing just that. And if you don't have everything that you need, you can always rent. Number three is that pros are not afraid to ask and be vocal about what they need. This is something I've noticed in my career specifically, and I know it happens with many people. When you're just starting out, you are getting used to how weddings work, what your style is like, and how to best capture the day. And it's intimidating to ask someone to do something, whether that's the bride or groom or another vendor, but it's absolutely something you should push yourself on to get to the point where you are comfortable with it. Now, I'm not encouraging you to do things that are entirely fake throughout the day. That's your call. It's not something that I'm fond of. So I'm not going to make one of my couples redo a first look or something like that, but I absolutely am going to move the bride or groom to the best light for prep, ask the groom to make sure both his hands are on his bride during portraits, tell people exactly where to stand for speeches, and many other things. While it will feel uncomfortable at first, it can go a long way in guaranteeing you get exactly what you need and will ultimately lead to a better film and a happier client. Number four is a boring one, but something that every single pro in the industry is doing, and that is being a legitimate business. Now this can mean a variety of things, but in general it means you have a business license, you have insurance, you have a tax ID, pay your taxes, collect sales tax if your state requires it, you have a contract that you use with every client, a business bank account, and if you're flying a drone for any of your weddings, you've obtained a part 107. And there could even be more than that based on your specific scenario. So be sure to link up with a CPA, a lawyer, an accountant, or anyone else that you need to talk to in order to set yourself up for success right from the start. Number five is that professionals are, well, they're just that, they're professional. They dress for a wedding, they use proper grammar on emails and social media, they act right on the wedding day, and more. One thing I've always been told is to dress for the job you want, not the one that you have, and that does not stop with weddings. I'm not telling you to wear a tux to a backyard barn wedding, but fellas, in my opinion, you should be in a button-up with a tie, nice pants and nice shoes, ladies, a nice dress that you can still move freely in, or a nice romper or something along those lines. How you dress is part of your branding and can be a big part in how you are perceived, so be sure to look your best. I see too many people showing up in jeans and a t-shirt or something along those lines, and it just doesn't do any favors for this industry as a whole. Number six, intentional stabilization. This can be anything from a tripod, monopod, gimbal, handheld, or other things, but what it means is that you are intentional with what you are choosing for the shot you're trying to get. One big mistake I see early and often in people's wedding filmmaking careers is throwing their camera on a gimbal and literally never leaving that setup. This severely limits you. You've probably heard my thoughts on gimbals for beginners in other videos, but ultimately every form of stabilization has a place and time to be used and trying to substitute one for the other is not the ideal way to do things. The seventh thing that pros in this industry are doing is not overshooting. 
This comes with experience, but if you want a surefire way to cut down on the amount of time that you're spending on a wedding edit, cutting down your footage is a great way to do that. Over the years, we have cut down how much we shoot drastically, and it's been really beneficial for us. Yes, there are wedding scenarios where we switch it up and shoot a bit more than usual, but we sat down and we were intentional about figuring out what we need and what we don't need to create our type of wedding films. It gives us direction from the start when we get into our edit and it helps us save time overall. And the very last thing that you will see pros in the wedding filmmaking industry doing is working together with other vendors. This means asking for what you need, giving other vendors what they need, open communication, and ultimately working together so that everyone can do their jobs as well as possible. Now, we all know that common conflict at weddings is between photo and video, but there's no reason for that. Discuss everything you need at the start of each portion of the day and keep each other in the loop. Think through scenarios and figure out where there could be conflict ahead and get out ahead of it. If a photographer steps in your shot, just give them a reminder. You are both there with the same goal in mind and you are both important. All of these examples are things that I've observed to be consistent with some of my favorite filmmakers in the industry, and I hope you found them helpful, but I also wanna hear from you guys, our awesome community. Let me know if there are other things that you can think of that pros in this industry are doing that sets them apart from the pack. As always, if you've got any questions, leave them down below in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.